The crowd's gathered for the 66th edition of the Airdrie Saxo Bank Classic. Airdrie Press, Harlbecker, as it's known colloquially in Belgium. A massive race, a warm-up for the Tour de Flanders, or perhaps, more probably, a big race in its own right. It's Flanders without the distance. 207 kilometres, 17 bergs, many of them used in the Tour of Flanders itself. And of course, all the big names, including world champion Mathieu van der Poel and two-time winner in the last couple of back-to-back -back years, Wild van Aert, hoping to make it a hat-trick. Van der Poel had ridden his first race just a few days before at Milano San Remo, van Aert coming down from altitude. Final climb in this one, the Tiekenberg, Quaramont and the Paterberg, the other way around to what we see in the Ronde in nine days after this race. And everybody focusing on the Tienberg as a popular and even possible in this race place to go. Headwind finish forecast as well, a rainy day too, an interesting race in prospect at the E3 Saxo Classic. Ten brilliant riders got up the road, Lubert, Herzog, De Pestel, Cavagna, Milesi, Merkel, Oliveira, Steimle, Abramson and Vermota were all there. Ronse was covered in mist and rain, a venue for a couple of world championships in the past, and the current world champion sending his team to the front, as did many of his rivals with a gap at 4.30. 80 k's to go, heading into the big moments, and towards the Tienberg, 2 minutes 45, Lidl Trek trying to power to the front, one man powering away, Mathieu von der Poel. Pedersen tried to go with him, Trentin was there as well, Sturven and Van Aert looking strong too, but nobody quite with the kick of the Dutchman. He'd finished third and second in this race before and was looking to do something that his dad tried and couldn't do, win this race. Pedersen though, who'd been up there in the past, was hoping to do the same and Lidl Trek were firing riders off the front all the time. Into the final 75 kilometers. Bertensteiner was next up. And Ala Philippe was the next to launch. He'd again be followed by Pearson. Van der Poel's teammate Krau was onto this one, as was Matteo Jorgensen. Sudal Quickstep with a great record in this race. Eight victories in the past two decades, but this time Ala Philippe's move wasn't going anywhere. Little Trek were then at it again just a few kilometres later. They were choosing to play the old quick step card of numbers up the road. Then Van der Poel would go once more himself. He dragged the peloton back towards the top. Piniam Girmay and Jonathan Narvaez were looking good. And as the kilometres ticked away, the breakaway's gap was coming down to just half a minute. On to the Stationsberg, written in the opposite direction to what we normally see at the Ronde van Vlaanderen, and a man who was good in Dwarf Dool of Vlaanderen last year, Oyer Lascano. 26 days without racing, back on the cobbles, pulling away with only Van der Poel and Van Aert there. Lascano's problem was that Van der Poel and Van Aert would pull away from him. The break began to be caught, and it was clear that the two cross-field rivals turned classic contenders, and now, of course, world champion, were there at the front and stronger than everybody else. But it's not always the strongest who wins the race. Tactical considerations come into it as well. And at the front, the breakaways days were almost numbered. More riders tried to get across. Lascana would make it across, Jorgensen would follow him, and they had eight seconds on the rest of them chasing. Into the final 50 kilometres, the final quarter of what was turning out to be an aggressive race. Not always the climbs that provides the moments in these races, and it was on this flat section that things would split up again. But split up and come together, that was the rhythm of the race. A crash, though, on the Paterberg. And it was Wat van Aert who went down going uphill. And at the very same moment that was happening, Mathieu van der Poel was making his move around Narvaez and up to the front of the race. For Wat van Aert, it looked impossible to get going, but get going he did, and up the Panterberg he would ride. In the meantime, further up the Berg, 
one of the shortest but steepers in the whole of Flanders. It was the world champion who'd gotten around Narvaez and Lascano and who was first to the top. He then start to build an advantage. Five seconds to start with. And that turned to 16 as he approached the Aldo Quarmont. Still 41 kilometers to go at this stage, but he would then build that gap again. People either side enjoying the spectacle, the entertainer was trying to win. Wat van Aert though wasn't giving up without a fight. He'd amazingly made it back on, through the group, and attacked. 27 seconds was the difference. Over the top of the Quadramont and heading to the final couple of climbs, Wat van Aert was bringing Mathieu van der Poel back. 20 seconds the gap at this stage. The chasers were over a minute behind, and with 24 kilometers to go, and on the Varent, after going down to just 11 seconds, the gap was swinging out again. Van der Poel was winning the tug of war. 18 kilometers to go, and then with six kilometers to go, the gap exploding. Wad van Aert blowing. It had taken its toll between the crash and the chase. Almost two minutes of a gap as Van der Poel went under the arch. Van Aert had been caught behind by Sturven. And Mathieu Van der Poel, after a third and second place, saluting the crowd, and they'd salute him as only the third man in the rainbow jersey to win the E3 Saxo Classic. Second place went to Sturven, third to Van Aert. There'll be no hat-trick win for him, but a win for the first time for the Van der Poel family, doing what both his grandfather and his father failed to do. Victory for the world champion for Mathieu van der Poel. An exhibition in the rain, the rainbow shining through. Classified top 10, full of big names, led by van der Poel, the winner, with Steven van Aert, Wellens and Jorgensen in the top five. Good rides too from the likes of Narvaez, Pollitt and the rest. A big moment for Mathieu van der Poel, adding a new race to his ever-impressive Palmares. Next up for him will be Gent Wevelgen.